Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? What's up? It's your boy, JTA, Joshua Tech Addiction. And as you can see here, I have the Galaxy Note 8. Now, the Galaxy Note 8 has been having a few issues with the battery drain after Oreo and all of the security patches. So I'm not sure if it was some security patch, which some people have said, or if it, it was the Oreo update. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can stop battery drain and get amazing battery life back on your Galaxy Note 8. So here are a couple of tips and tricks and let's get started. First thing I like to say on my phone, as you can see, I am no longer supporting the TouchWiz home interface, which not to say I'm not supporting it because I actually don't mind TouchWiz, but I noticed TouchWiz was doing significant drain on my battery because this app, this is one of the apps you should actually download, which is battery, um, AccuBattery. Now for some of the features, you do have to pay but that is okay because it's totally worth it. It will show you your battery health, which here it shows mine is at 93%. Estimated capacity, 3,058 milliamps versus the design capacity of 3,300 milliamps. So this goes through a breakdown. It has charts, graphs, how it's discharging and what's causing most of the discharge of your device here. So I would definitely say um, this is definitely a good app. This app shows you when you charge it and discharge it, how many cycles you're using here. See battery wear cycle 0.01 cycle and then some are like a full cycle. So this is a really cool app, AccuBattery Pro. I'll leave a link in the description. But on to the next app that I use besides going into the settings I'm if you don't want to change any of the settings you can download this launcher so this app launcher is called battery saver and literally it is giving me amazing battery you see how this is seven hours and 12 minutes um, of battery left and I have 42 percent that's amazing because what it does is this is a truly unlike Apple's built-in management system for closing apps it puts apps to sleep but guess what those apps keep waking up periodically this app as long as you have this little sugar comb or snowflake beside it um, yes yeah, a snowflake because these look like polar bears but it will keep the app sleep so this app will be in hibernate mode so all these apps are in hibernate mode and definitely the only downside is if you want to do some multitasking it is basically um, the app is going to have to refresh and reboot and start over versus if it was running in the background. All right, so all of these apps are in hibernation. So if you click on hibernate, it will redo all of them. But really, you just want to click on the ones that you want to hibernate now. So like if I click on kick, hit hibernate, it's going to hibernate. So with this app, um, it is limiting a lot of the functions. If you go into quick settings, you can toggle off a lot of things here and they have a boost mode. So I would recommend tapping here, clearing out the catch, then hitting the boost mode. I have it in airplane mode right now just because I don't want anybody interrupting me why I'm doing this video. So let's go into, let's clear this and let's go into the battery settings. Now, of course, to get better battery, normally we go to mid or max, one of those things. And then also you can save power by pressing this right here. That is definitely going to save you power by closing all of those off and putting those to sleep. But again, they will awake up on their own. So what you can also do is go into advanced setting. Oh, hold on. You can go into battery usage. See what's really using the battery here. And sometimes it's the Android system. You can, it says allow background activity. You can actually cut that off. Now your phone may not work properly in some apps and certain things will freeze and close up. So you may not want to do that, 
but this is an option and this definitely saves you some battery. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut on my, take my phone off airplane mode and show you what's going on with my network. So, right now I have it on 3G only because guess what, I have Sprint and I have this on an unlocked model. Actually, and I have the data off, so sometimes you should also toggle off data um, when you're not using your data. But most people won't do that. So, as you can see, my background face is always black. So, no matter if I'm using the TouchWiz home face or this app, it's always black. Here, showing 3G, because when I'm connected to LTE, what happens is this is an unlocked phone and then also Sprint versions I've noticed to do this. If you have LTE, but it's not the best signal between LTE and LTE Plus, your phone will go back and forth between LTE and LTE Plus, and switching back and forth between those type of um, bands and those um, networks drains your battery. And I noticed it was draining it significantly, so I did something about it, and um, I just stuck to 3G, which is decent enough for most things, but when I want to do downloads and heavy uh, lifting apps that need a lot of data, data hungry, I turn it back up to LTE. So other things that I have done to um, spruce up the battery is, oh, my screen resolution. So I always leave my screen display down to HD um, plus. You have different options here, FDH, WQHD, which is the highest resolution. I would not recommend having it on this. You can have it on the middle, which still looks great, but the lowest is definitely going to give you the maximum amount of battery. Also, auto brightness. I turn auto brightness off. Of course, blue filter is off because that does drain battery, but only when you need it at nighttime. But again, auto brightness off and my brightness level, I always keep it low. Now, I know some people, they just love love to keep their brightness to the max all the way up even on their iPhones and other phones um, which is okay but me even when I do graphic design work on my Mac I like to keep the brightness here so that's what is gonna stay on my phone the other thing is the LED indicator now I do love this to be on so I know when my phone is charging and when I get a new notification so I leave that on but I would recommend that you actually just go ahead and turn that bad boy off because that is going to be a corporate of um, draining some of your battery. Um, with the the screen timer thing, I would leave it on for a minute because with screen timeout, you definitely are going to drain more battery by the screen turning off, then you turn it back on. The screen turning off, turning it back on. So after 15 seconds of inactivity, it goes off. So I would just advise you to leave it at at least 30 seconds or a minute. That should be good enough to if you fiddle with something or drop your phone or do whatever, you can go back um, to your task without the screen timing out. The best thing to do if battery drain is occurring as well is to just turn on power saving mode. You definitely have the mid and then it shows you here what power save mode is turning off and then just apply it and let it extend your battery. Now, this isn't extending my battery by too much, but definitely by an extra hour, and if you're out and about, definitely is gonna help, so definitely do that. Um, another thing is, um, oh, so max. If you really wanna do it to max, then you see max limits CPU and all of these great things. So just go ahead and click it, and you're definitely going to get amazing, amazing battery. The good thing about um, ultra power saving mode, I mean max power save, saving mode, is the fact that you can still use your essential apps to actually keep operating your phone, make phone calls, check Google Maps. Um, if you have the WhatsApp app installed, it'll let you use WhatsApp. So these are all the apps that I'm still able to use, and this is perfectly fine for me. I'm not checking Twitter like that or Instagram or Facebook. So I don't need it. Now, one thing some people might complain about is where's the email. You can always check email through the web browser. But just in case you're a little picky, delete the camera app, which is amazing. You can still use the camera app in this um, mode. But boom, and just add your email or your Gmail. You're good to go. You can add your voicemail, voice recorder. 
So the basic functions, guys, Google Chrome is here. Your clock is here. So the Note 8 is definitely still a big win. As you can see, my phone is still on 3G, and guess what? 40%. So it's not draining crazy. Like, it's not like how when I first downloaded Oreo, but I'm telling you, with that widget, I mean, with that app, Power Saver, hold on, let's turn this back off and, and show you back the app. It is putting my apps to hibernate mode and the main corporate in the battery drain, to me, I feel, is Samsung's own TouchWiz home interface and the Oreo interface. So this right here, is very light. I don't like how the apps are organized. I have to search the apps. You know, I don't have any folders. Um, let me see, I think you can create folders. Maybe not, but just play around with it, guys. This is definitely gonna save you a lot of battery and keep your phone running all day. This has been JTA, Joshua Tech Addiction, and I'll come to you guys in maybe a part two video with more tips and tricks on how to save battery on your Galaxy Note 8. You don't have to upgrade to the S9 when you have a great phone right here. So, till next time, peace.